So in my teaching, I often encounter three different types of students. They fall usually in one or more categories. Clueless, delusional, and ill-equipped. Clueless, delusional, and ill-equipped. So this video is helping you to determine if you fall into one or several of those categories, and if so, what to do. I'm coming at you live from the basement studio dungeon. Hopefully my son will take a nap. You might hear him. But uh, I'm going to jump right in. So first category is clueless. Uh, that's a category that's actually easiest for me to work with. This is a student who has zero idea or experience determining what's working and what's not. They're just completely out to lunch. So they don't know what to fix. They don't know what's working. They really can't assess themselves. And then uh, if you were my student, I'd have you work on that self-assessment, specifically in two areas. So the first step of self-assessment, which is the antidote really to this clueless category, is record yourself. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's audio or video, uh, it just has to be something that's easy to use and easy to review. And the second part of that self-assessment for the clueless student is asking a really simple diagnostic question. If you were to judge the performance you hear or see on this recording of yourself, if you were to judge it like you would someone at a competition or on video or on YouTube, what's holding that performance together? What's working? What's not? Uh, where are the weak spots? And you really develop that muscle of self-assessment and being able to step outside of yourself when you look at this video or listen to this recording. Uh, but the one caveat with that is you have to be honest and yet gentle with yourself honest and looking at your weaknesses, but also not too harsh, because I find if a student's too harsh, they can easily push themselves into the second category, which is delusional. Now, you may have arrived at this category as a student, or you might find yourself there, stuck there, but for me, a delusional student is actually a dangerous place to be, because the delusional student, as I call him or her, is someone who just plays the fun parts of a piece. They just do what comes easy or natural, and they gloss or skate over anything that's a little bit difficult or anything that's a little uncomfortable. Any weak area, they just completely run past, gloss over, um, whether that's consciously or unconsciously. Um, and they're really just deluding themselves as to how good they are, how much they've mastered this piece. So they're ignoring the work they could identify the problems if they just slowed down and were present and really were willing to face the uncomfortable truth about what wasn't working in their play, in their playing. I get it. I understand it. We make music because it's fun. We make music to experience pleasure. And anything that's uncomfortable, we want to skip over or skate past. And for, so for that second student, who's, as I call, delusional, uh, the antidote for that, the next step, is really to try to gamify their work and teach them how to use the principles of gamification. Now that's a whole separate topic, but briefly for me, gamifying any exercises involve two factors. One is just learning how to break down the trouble spots into something that's both challenging yet accessible. So what do I mean by that? If uh, you use your own internal thermostat as a guide, uh, you gotta determine as a uh, musician if you're bored, or if you're overwhelmed. So if you find yourself bored and checked out as you're working on a problem spot that you've finally identified um, and coming out of your self-delusion, uh, you've got to then dial it up a notch. So if you're bored or checked out, you've got to make the game a little harder. So add another few uh, beats or measures and really try to make it a little bit something more difficult. On the flip side, using this internal thermostat when you're trying to break down a piece to a, the right size chunk to work on. If you find yourself resisting or avoiding or feeling overwhelmed, you've taken on more than you can chew. I often find, especially with motivated students, they tend to go more this direction. They get too impatient and they break off a big piece and they might take this much and I might have them work on this much, right? To really, really break it down, just a bite size challenge. Video games and video game design, designers have this principle down, just learning to take the next level, do the next little challenge, take the next step. So if you can find a way to break things down, that's the first part of 
gamifying your work. The second part is you got to set up a re rewards system. I don't care if that's a point chart. I don't care if you give yourself a superhero name and have funny, silly names for each level of your playing. Uh, that could be something intrinsic to playing the instrument, or it could just be a reward outside of music. It could be five minutes of your favorite Netflix show. Whatever it is, it has to be something to give you a bit of extrinsic motivation to jump in and do the hard work uh, on your piece or whatever you're working on. Hopefully, eventually, that becomes and transfers to some intrinsic motivation just to enjoy the process and have the process of working on music be its own reward. So that's my uh, tip for people who start out in this delusional category. That's a sort of second category. And the third one, ill-equipped. These students, I find, are often on the cusp of a breakthrough. So an ill-equipped student has identified problems. They've been able to self-assess. Uh, they're also willing to address it, so they're no longer delusional. They're not skipping past the icky parts. Uh, they just need the tools to progress further. So often with an ill-equipped student, to try to give them a toolkit of approaches, I'll start with asking them um, what's changing. Sometimes there's one, many times there's lots of parameters changing. By parameters, I mean specifically for a piano player, it could be the location on the keyboard from high to low, uh, both hands or one hand. It could be the direction. You may be moving up and you might change direction and go down. Uh, it might be a big gesture, a small gesture. The hands could go apart and then together, or they could start moving parallel. Those are changes of direction. It could be a change of phrasing. It could be a change of all of a sudden we're doing something that has a sense of pickups or arrivals to the next thing, and then it becomes a little choppier phrasing, right? So that change almost of uh, musical units. It could be a change of rhythm. All of a sudden a tricky rhythm gets introduced when you've been doing something very regular. It could be a change of key signature or adding an accidental, a sharp or flat. Or it could be really something as simple as just a little change of fingering. You've been using your thumb and first finger and all of a sudden the pinky gets in, involved. So I'll just start trying to really methodically break it down to say, okay, what is changing? And can we just address even those one at a time and really dig in and give a lot of tools? Again, drawing from this principle of gamifying, backing up a step to that second category of student. It's also useful to gamify when you're an ill-equipped student, you've identified your problems, you're tackling them head on, you've broken it down to even what's changing and where the real, real tiny, tiny issues are. Uh, and then you just treat it like a game. So uh, I'm gonna work on a future video talking about some of these examples of gamifying lessons uh, where I've given or my students have developed their own little etudes and frame them in terms of games and hopefully it'll inspire you to create your own games but that's for a future video a little teaser for you so thanks for watching uh, before I sign off uh, question is just which category or categories have you been in or do you find yourself in right now and uh, what do you want out of your work on the instrument what's next for you as a musician so thanks for those watching I see some comments so I'll uh, get at you in the comments section and take it easy. Talk to you soon.